It's like you're talking from the age of six up until 15, 16. You've got a whole 10 years of absolute chaos. A lot of it was, was nasty bloody robberies, man. Me and Nick, we're in the bank and we've basically followed the van. He's gone in. We've gone in after him. He's put the money in his chute. We've took the money back out and off we've run. The next thing I've been crashed into from this side, smashed into this side. Next thing I'm seeing handguns coming out everywhere, hats going on. Next thing, the windows have all come in through on the car. And I'm thinking, you fucking idiot. Why aren't you driving the car? And all this is going on. And I'm shouting at the driver, fucking drive. Hello and welcome. Switched on with Joseph Barnett. Thank you very much for listening in. And as I say before, any of my shows, make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, the show is three months old. We're doing well so far, but it's very important that uh, you subscribe to my YouTube channel so I can get the caliber of guests like I've got on today. And without further ado, I'll give him an introduction. Uh, this chap, he, uh, we've been contacting for the last few weeks. Uh, he's a convicted armed robber. Uh, he's lived a life of crime. Uh, he wants to tell his story today, uh, which I think is going to be fantastic for for everyone listening in. Uh, his name's Anthony Roberts. Thank you very much for coming on today, mate. How you doing, mate? How you Fine. doing? You're good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Good, good, good. So, Anthony, I just wanted to, you know, we've been talking for the last few weeks. Yeah. Uh, and I wanted to establish, I've done some research into you. I know that obviously you've been inside for arm robbery um, and you, you robbed a bank famously dressed uh, in a burqa, yeah, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, so just to just get a feel for it, like initially, what was the like the sort of big crimes you under, you, you've undertaken sort of in severity? Um, mainly banks. Um, there was a crime, so obviously that it was, it was money, wasn't it? Large quantities of money. Mm. relatively easy to rob wasn't it wasn't hard it was easy mm. and and that's what's made it addictive you know and being being uh being 20 something years old at the time it was quite fun i i found it as as fun but obviously looking back at it now many years later it's it, it caused a lot of trouble for me mm. an awful lot of trouble like you do get the good obviously it's it's, it's fun doing things like that it, you might seem that it's fun at the time but when you end up getting locked up and you're in court and all your family are there and then you've got impact statements from victims and stuff like that, it takes all the, the glory out of it. Mm. You know what I mean? So, and what was, you know, I was doing it, as I said to you before, I'd done the research into it and I know sort of it, it becomes sort of a petty crime thing, didn't it? And then it got more serious yeah. and serious into that. And I like to establish, and I've had, and I've got a few um, people that have lived a life of crime. I've spoken to, obviously, Dave Courtney and people like that. But there's always sort of a catalyst for it. And there's always something that, that sets it off, especially as a kid. Yeah. Um, and it, it sort of builds up through youth. Where did it all sort of start for you? Was there a, was there a, a catalyst for it? What You know, I know that you've had a, a bad upbringing. Yeah. Um, I had a very, very bad upbringing. I wouldn't say it was my mum's fault because obviously she'd done the best she could in the situation that she 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 could manage um but i did end up i end up getting abused when i was free uh sexually abused by a babysitter and after that my my um my behavior deteriorated as you can imagine a three-year-old kid things like that happened to him bloody hell yeah. what are you so you were just uh, what, what you just yeah. a normal babysitter normal normal babysitter well he weren't a normal babysitter it was a nonce no, it was, it was a nonce I mean? yeah, yeah yeah absolute pedo but um yeah he done that to me and then Obviously, I told my mum straight away. As soon as she came home, I told her what happened. She took me to the hospital. And the thing that made it worse was because the hospital then turned around and said I was a three-year-old boy that didn't want my bum, which I find absolutely crazy because if any kid at three years old says that, they're not lying. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're not lying. And then obviously after that, my, my behaviour changed. Mm. I become very um, aggressive, as you would imagine. Kids, it confuses a child, doesn't it? it makes her head, it, the kid's head goes mental. Mm. Uh, I, like years later, I still have nightmares about that, and I'm 36 now, mm. and that happened 33 years ago. You it's know, terrible. Um, and then you've got that, and obviously then that leads on to other things like your mum not being able to control your temper, not being able to control you because you're different to everyone else because someone's done this to you. Mm. You know what I mean? And then that makes you angry makes you not trust people why me you know what i mean and then you feel dirty you know when you think about it you think fuck man you know it makes you feel 
not good. That's terrible. It's terrible. It, it's uh, it really is. And so, you know, when when you started to get this aggression, when was it around primary uh, school? You know, you more or less straight away. Straight away. Straight away. Yeah. And you've always been sort of hard to deal with. I've from been that very way. difficult to deal with up until five years ago when I actually decided that enough was enough. Um, well, I, the real change happened, two thousand and eleven, but I couldn't put them. I couldn't put that into practice until two thousand and fifteen. Mm. And because of my own, let's say, um, because I fell for the bait, I ended up back in jail the last time. And I find myself pretty lucky um, that I didn't get a lot longer, mm. you know. So, but it all stems, like you said, it all stems from the beginning. Mm. You know, if, if if them first steps had been right, then... It leads on. Uh, yeah. And it, that was the that catalyst for you yeah, to it was, the... Yeah, yeah, 100%. Because then after that, it was just a roller coaster of madness. Mm. From the age of three mad shit my mum couldn't control me burning down the house running away from her climbing up buildings hanging tried to burn down the house i did burn down the house you burnt down your house i burnt the house down at three years old yeah literally i nearly killed me my mum and my little sister yeah but i was three years old you know playing with lighters fire and but this was the sort of behavior that i started to show after the abuse Mm. so uh, obviously you you know the that shit's happened to you. It's absolutely terrible. And when you, you know, you got into secondary school, did you get into crime then? I didn't. I, I'll tell you where I was. I, I ended up going to um, a school of, what was it? I think it was called Tyburn. And then I went from Tyburn to a, a mainstream school. Mm. And then I got kicked out. And there's this, fast. where's this, Wembley? Or no, something? this was in um, Listen Grove, Edgware Road. Right, yeah, yeah. And I went to a school called St. Edward's and I, d- I can't remember how long I lasted, but I know I didn't last long. Um, I remember the, I was talking to my mum about this the other day and um, she was like, do you remember when the teachers had you in the middle of the classroom with loads of chairs around you? And they said that I was possessed because I was throwing chairs at the teachers and I was just a wild kid. But there's a reason for that kid being wild. Mm. You know, I didn't wake up one day and decide to start hating on everyone, you know what I mean? Mm. But yeah, I was very out of control as a child, run away from everybody. It is, it, it, and... Uh... And and as you say, it all sort of stems from from the abuse as a kid, and then you've sort of get on it makes you an aggressive sort of lad. And they obviously didn't know how to deal with you at school. No, they couldn't. Um, sort of in the system of how schools deal with kids now. Um, and you went into crime then. I Is did. it petty crime, thieving, robbing? What happened was I went from the age of three to six. I was um, I was just mad, mad kid. Like there was loads of incidences that my mum couldn't cope with me you know and I, I feel sorry for her to some extent you know what I mean because she only she she could only deal with what she could deal with you know and she she was working all the hours she could she, I remember mum was a cleaner because we don't come from wealth mm. you know, like my, none of my family have got money mm. you know and my mum was working all the hours she could I remember her running from one cleaning job to the next cleaning job to the, and bringing us with her mm. and what you and, and on the side you were uh, just start I was just a petty maniac. thief yeah. was just normal well, I didn't actually start my true criminal career until I came back to London see the thing is I've always been a little a little shit basically I was a little fucker mm. yeah because of all the shit that I used to do but I went through the kids homes and now my my whole plan was this I wanted to get back home and this is what I did. And I had it set in my head. I got removed from my mum's at six years old. And they put me all over the place. First, they went to a psychiatric hospital for kids, for young kids in Oxford. It was called the Marby Bush. They were called the Inglers No Hopers, so I've seen online. Which is bad. Yeah, it's a bad right. place. I, I ain't got no memory, fond memories from that place. I stuck that out until I was nine. And then I nicked their car in the middle of the night. <laughs> And then, what? yeah, yeah, stole their car in the middle at of the nine night. years at old. Nine years old, yeah. Took it for a joyride up the country lanes, crashed into a fence, and shit my pants and stayed there until I got found the next morning by some stranger. He's obviously walked down to the school, That's insane. F- found him, and said, it's Like, you've got funny. one. It's not funny, but it is. <laughs> so they've come, come and got me, and I got kicked out of there. And then I got sent to a place called Sherland Road, uh, which is in London. Um, bad place, that, I'm sure. Mm. John's told you about them, them places, all the things that used to happen there. But Talk um, about John Wedger, yeah, he puts in contact. Yeah, yeah, he's a good guy, John. Same with Terry Ellis. And um, but he was, he was telling um, when I got to that actual place, um, it was just, it's a weird, it's a weird environment. Being a young kid, nine years of age, you're quite scared, you know. Mm. Think about it. Like you've got, you've been in this boarding school for three years, two and a half years. You don't want to be there. Mm. But you've had a whole lot of mad shit happen whilst you've been there. And then you end up stealing the car. 
just because I suppose you can. And I, I wouldn't say I, I had the first intentions to go and steal that car. It was I was a board kid looking around the boarding school, looking what I could fucking do at three o'clock in the morning. Mm. And it's a massive building. If you look at it online, it's absolutely humongous. Mm. So I found the keys. I loved driving. <laughs> I was a kid. I loved motors. And I remember there was a, a member of staff there. Um, his name was Jeff. I don't know his real his second name, but he was a lovely guy, and and I actually do remember him. And he he was like a care worker, like my sort of, I don't know how you'd put it, like someone that looked out for me. Mm. And he'd take me out in the car, and he'd do wheel spins, and I was like, I want to set that. you off. Yeah, and I was like, I want to do that. I want to do wheel spins. <laughs> and what he did realize <laughs> yeah. is you planned to take it out on your own. Yeah, yeah, at right, night. right. <laughs> so um, yeah, we stole. I stole. I stole the motor. Ended up going uh, for a joyride, getting kicked out of that home, and then I got sent to um, into London, and I was only there for a short period of time, mm. and then I got sent to Kent. Now, from the age of nine till thirteen, I met um, a wonderful lady called Chrissy, and she was the only woman in my whole entire life that actually made me feel loved which is big up to her mate because she told me and showed me what family life is without her without her having that initial impact on my life i think it could have got a lot worse mm. and i really do but she was like she a sort was of mother figure for you yeah mm. and and i loved her and to this day i still love her to pieces mm. and me and my missus we went and seen her a couple of years ago we went down to, down to kent Spent the day down on the beach, had a beer with her and her husband, and it was, it was like, lovely, you know. So tell me, Anthony. Then tell me when it first started to kick off for you when you started to get in trouble with the police. Crime, crime. Yeah. Right. Basically, that was when I was. I used to run away from my children's home. See. Yep. I was in a lot of care homes. And yep. When I was in, when I was thirteen, I came back to London. I got removed from a Kent uh, children's home in Kent, back to London. So I came back to London to a children's home called Claverton Street, 5 Claverton Street in Victoria. It's right opposite where all the pedo po politicians are, you know, that Dolphin Square? Dolphin, yes, yeah. I know it well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, well, I was there anyway, that's where I was. I was in that kid's home at 13 and I was not even there six hours and I'd already run away from the place. Really? Yeah, I got there and I was gone. Literally, my feet, there was like trails of dust behind me. As soon as I hit that gaff, my mum left, I was gone. Mm. And I, as soon as I got out of that home, I was because that home was in Victoria, and I'm originally from Edgware Road. It's only a, a one bus yeah. journey away, yeah, yeah, so I was straight back into the man to see my friends. Yeah, you know, and I was, so I was pissed as well to be put in care because obviously I grew up in Edgware Road and all my friends in Edgware Road, and it, what I don't know, it's hard to explain. Like, because when I was in prison, I was in Wandsworth, and I was banged up with my mate, and he was like, "And you just disappeared," mm. and I was like, "Yeah." I just disappeared, but it's the care system. They just picked me up and I was gone, mm. you know? So then to come back and see all my friends, it didn't, didn't matter where you put me, I was running away. Yeah, yeah. You know, you could put me anywhere you like and I was over that fence and I was gone. And that's how it was. It was up, in, up until I got my own place, I wasn't homeless basically because I used to run away from so many homes. Mm. And my mum, at the time, me and my mum was having some mad stuff and she she didn't want me in the house because i was obviously i was under care i was in care and i all i wanted was to go back to her you know mm. so that was the plan just go through every home mm. and i did mm. i went through every single home they could possibly put me in and i got out basically i managed to get out i got back to mum's when i was 15 didn't last didn't last because that damage has already been created. Yeah. You know, like from the beginning, all them years, like you're talking from the age of six up until 15, 16, you've got a whole 10 years of absolute chaos. Mm. You know, you've got sleeping in blocks of flats, mm. breaking into cars just to hotwire them to stay warm. No 13-year-old sh no should be doing that. Right. And that's what you were doing, really, yeah, just breaking exactly into what cars, hotwire them. Breaking into cars, hotwire them, put the en drive them around the corner, leave the engine running just to stay warm because I was fucking freezing. Yeah. You know, and then you've got like, the care homes, the police, I'll be hiding from the old bill, constantly hiding from them. I'll be with my mate. I'm obviously not going to mention his name on here, right. but um, a good friend of mine, and he was he was a big part of my life, man. And uh, me and him used to just, I used to, I used to run away from my children's home and his mum and him, they would hide me. So I'd be hiding underneath their blanket, uh, under their bed, mm. and the police would be knocking on the door. Trying to put like, you back yeah, in. Yeah, trying to take me back to the care homes. And he, him and his family... They were they were good to me, man. 
I'll never forget them. You know mm. what I mean? We don't speak now, um, but that's just the way. It, that's that's life, unfortunately, isn't it? You know what I mean? But yeah, it was a traumatic childhood. So, wait, in the um, care homes themselves, what made you when you was there trying to uh, escape? Was I there my mum? You only your mum. There wasn't abusive mom. there or anything there like was, that. There was abuse when I was. Um, see, the thing is, when I went to Kent, um, I met Chrissy. That was very stable. And then I met another boy that I was in boarding school with. Mm. And this boy, on this particular day that I, I got abused, man. And I didn't know how it was, I didn't know, I wasn't expecting that. You know, I met this kid, I knew this kid from boarding school, from when I went to boarding school and I ran away from there, stole the car. And I met this one guy and um, he was like, yeah, come, come out, come. Anyway, cut a long story short, I've ended up being taken in a car I'm not going to go into actual prob detail because that just made me upset. I don't really want to no, come no, here for course, that. You know what I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. But took me away in the car. Him and what I believe was, because he was in a care home, I believe it was a member of staff from his care home and they took me out to a field and they both abused me. Shit. And that, I didn't tell anyone about that until I went to Dovegate Prison because I was so disgusted in that because mm. I was nine. Mm. I could accept being three years old. You, could, you, you can't really run. You know, mm. you're free, you don't know what to do. But I blamed myself for the one. When I was nine, I blamed that on me for years, you know, because mm. I could have run away, but I didn't. Mm. You know? And it, it's, um, it, it's sort it of haunted me, man, to be fair. It fucking haunted me for years and years and years. And then I went to Dovegate and that's when I really wanted to change. That's why I went to Dovegate. And if, if, if none of your viewers know about Dovegate, Dovegate is basically exactly the same as Grendon Prison. The only thing in it's it's called Dovegate, as in it's a therapeutic community, and mm. that there is for behaviour. Now, because I had such a evil strike in me, let's just say it was evil. I could do pretty horrible things to people and not feel and not feel anything about it. What did you do? Uh, just done a lot of robberies, like a lot of robberies. Uh, I can't obviously. I've not been convicted for some of the things no. I have, so I've got to be course. pretty careful course, what I say, you know. But um, a lot of it was was nasty, bloody robberies, man. Mm. You know, there was weapons involved sometimes, not all the times. And so, tell me through some of the ones. Obviously, you don't put well, the ones in a, the but, ones that we done, the ones that I got convicted of were obviously the banks uh, dressed up in the burkas. Um, we done a few of them. Tell me the methodology in that. So, what, do you hook up with a friend? Obviously, you can't tell me his name or... Well, my friend now, actually, I'm trying to petition for him to come out because he's still in jail, man. And he's been in jail for a long time, man. I'm not going to say his name on your show, obviously, because I don't think I'll be able to do that. But no. he's been in jail a long time. He got convicted in 2009 for a crime. Um, and he's still in jail, man. And what, and you know, obviously he's your buddy and obviously you were in prison at the time you were having it, but did you, was it just like the mindset, what's your mindset at this time is saying I'm like, right, it. we need to rob something, we yeah, need to do I this. get paid. No matter what you do, because it just seems like, for me, obviously, I, I've, I'm not, uh, I don't know the, the mindset of a robber, uh, but yeah, what sort of, it, it seems to me that when people um, go in there, it's sort of like the last result. They're unhinged. They don't care yeah. what they do, how they do it. Yeah. They want to get the money and that's it. It and depends on the site and the mind frame isn't it? And, the, yeah. and the mindset. Like, cause when we were committing crime, I thought we were quite methodical about it. We would have vehicles, plate them up. We'd then go out. We wouldn't just rob. Was this groups of you? Or? It'd be a few of us. It'd be a few of us, um, and we would train. We, we basically we would find a location. We then get everything we need, as in however many vehicles you need. Clone the vehicles, get the clone plates, then go out. Go out to work. Mm. Literally, anyone gets in front of you, deal with them. What violent? Right? Yeah, violently. Really, and that's the way it has to be. Yeah, which is unfortunate for the for the for the person who's going to get involved. But you know. When you're in that world, like being a criminal and being a normal citizen is a massive difference, man. Mm. Like you've got the criminal world, don't give a fuck about anyone other than Ruthless. getting away and getting paid. And that's it. That's what it boils down to is doing it, going home, enjoying the money, saving the money or doing whatever you want to do with the money. But it becomes, it's, it's, it becomes addictive, you know? It's like literally addictive. Like, yeah. it becomes very easy. Very, very easy. Like, you get up in the morning. For instance, the ones that I've been convicted of, I, I'll talk to you about. Um, the hotel. 
that I got nicked for, for instance, and uh, the one that's in in the papers and everything. That was just absolute. And what was that now? And is this the travel lodge? Yeah, that's yeah. the travel lodge. They said it was a great big heist of a travel lodge. Yeah, and all yeah. That. Fucking, it was weren't. it Ealing? Was yeah, it was in Ealing. Ealing. Yeah, just off the North Circle, I think yeah. it was, or the A Forty, I think it is. They the paper made it out to be some great bloody thing. It weren't. It mm. weren't no great bloody thing. It was a couple of geezers that had failed a bank robbery a couple of days before. Needed money. I was on the run, and anything goes. That's how it was. Exactly that. And you went into it. So you ju- you're on a run. We'll talk about the other previous robbery that you were talking about. But this one, you went in there armed. There was weapons involved. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, one of one of the well, the guy that got grabbed and we demanded him to open the safe. Safes. Sorry. Sorry. Um, he said that we put a gun to his back. There weren't no gun there. Mm. On that particular time, there weren't a gun there. But there was knives. You know, and um, he did. He, he was lying, but then again, he's got to do what he's got to do. He's innocent, isn't he? Yeah. So he might have perceived it to be a gun. Well, or yeah. Well, there again, yeah. You know, if you have got something pointing in your back, and you have got four men balaclavered up, <laughs> fucking grabbing you up and telling you to open a safe, that's pretty intimidating, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. So, what's going through your mind? You know, you're going in there. You've you've just you you you've got to make money. You've got to, you're on the run. Is it? What's the methodology here? Is there an intimidation factor? You've got to go in there and write the first person you see, put you've got to make ass. put yeah, it on them yeah, to make yeah. everyone else yeah, know yeah. that you basically, mean business. Basically, you've got to control your area, isn't it? Yeah. You know, and you've got to deal with any threat. Any threat that comes at you, you need to deal with it. You need to be very decisive about that. You need mm. to deal with it quickly because he could potentially ruin the whole thing, put one of your boys in hospital. If he's got a weapon and he cuts my mate, my mate's going to bleed all over the floor. Therefore, he's fucked. Yeah. Because his DNA's there now. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you've got to deal with people. You've got to deal with them straight away, which is which is why robbery, this is why you get so much time because mm. it's pure aggression, pure violence, pure fear. Mm. You know, like putting someone in a headlock and clamping them until they choke out and go to sleep. That's, that's fucking horrible, mate. And that's yeah. obviously what you had to do, just to things like that. Yeah, you know, things things pretty similar to that. And obviously, like, it doesn't affect you until you hear certain things. Mm. Like all my other crimes, I, I I didn't feel really affected by it. It was more like, oh well, you know, that's how that was. The, that was how it was. But then when I on my last sentence, going through all, I didn't want to do it. Mm. I didn't want to do this no more. I said it to my missus, like on the last crime that um I was I was run I was I was running this time, I was on the one and I was telling her, oh, I'm sick of this man. I've I changed my life. I've been good. Like, give me a break, man. I'm trying to fucking change it, you know what I mean? I've done everything I possibly could. I've gone through the T C fucking um the Dovegate, the therapeutic sentences. I sat there with dirty fucking pedo bastards, yeah. I hate these fuckers, yeah. I sat there with these fuckers for a year trying to do therapy, trying to fix myself and then I come out of jail and end up fucking letting other people draw me back into this world that I didn't want to be in. Hence, I went on the run. Mm. You know what I mean? So you've been inside how many times? I've done quite a few sentences. I think I've ranged over 10 years in prison by far. And your first stint, uh, obviously you're referring to your last stint when you tried to get out and then you went back in again. So that was your last stint in jail. What uh, What was the long sentence you had? Was the it from the Kilburn? Yeah, that was, I got the 12 years reduced to eight on guilty plea because I was banged to rights, mate. It was What, robbing a bank? Uh, no, this was actually robbing, This I got nicked. This is the maddest thing about cool. it. So I got nicked for... I got out in 2009 and I remember when I got nicked, I was on the floor and I laugh about it now because it's, it was sort of surreal. Yeah, yeah, man. It's like, it's when I sit there and I think about it now, it's like, fucking hell, that really did happen. One minute, there was no one there. Literally 30, not even 10 seconds so you, later. So you, where's this? Where's Right, so what happened was the police were watching me. It's a special unit out of Scotland Yard. They're called SCD7. Yeah. Yeah. Now they deal with violent crimes as in organised criminals, drugs uh, i don't know exactly their pacific but the ones that got me were robbery squad mm. and they're at scotland yard and they're attached to barnes flying squad and finchley flying squad yeah now you've you heard of the flying squad you know yeah, they're yeah, the yeah. boys isn't they? they're the yeah. ones that come out of you with all the guns and whatnot well we on this particular day i'll tell you what the police said so that make it more simple for you basically the police were watching us for some time on and off on and off on and off and i i knew they were watching me 
So on one particular day, I see them following me in a black cab. And I was actually going to go out and do crime that day. Yeah. And, um, but they showed their hand by, they got out of the car and I spotted him instantly. And they were in a black cab. Now you'd know any Londoner in a black cab, they wear necklaces. That's their license. Yeah. Mm. This geezer never had that on. And he was paying attention to a vehicle. And I knew straight away, I said to my Cody, I said, that's flying squad, man. And then we drove off and then they started following us. So we'd done two U-turns and started following them. So then I pulled up beside him and I'm like, taking the piss out of him. I'm like, what are you doing? Mm. Like your cover's blowing, man. You know, like it's a big game. It's banter yeah. time now. That's how I seen it. Yeah, it was like, catch me if you can. Yeah. Because that's where it went. It turned into a big game. Like one minute you're you're doing the robberies and it's great fun. It's getting all this money, blah, blah, blah. And then you realise the police are on you. And then you've got to watch out for other criminals because they want to rob you. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's a, it's a, it's a mad, it's a mad environment. That. What's the mindset though? Is it, you know, if they're following you, do you think, well, you know, obviously you did end up getting caught, yeah. but do you I think, is it, is it like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm still going to go at it. Yeah. I'm not going to watch, yeah. watch yeah, myself I, I, a bit yeah, more. Yeah. No, I thought I was better than them by far. I thought I was, I thought I was the boss. I did. I thought I was a. I thought I was a bad man. <laughs> literally, I thought I was literally the man. You, you, you're not catching me, and that's exactly the attitude. I'd get fast cars. You ain't catching me in this. Same thing, motorbikes. You ain't catching me, and that's exactly how it was. And it, it went like that for years, mm. on and off, on and off. Other, only times I was out, obviously, when I was in prison, it's depressive times. You know, you yeah. sit there, you enjoy, you think, oh, what's so? I've what about here? this? This real moment. So, talk me through. Um, when you you went into dressed as a burqa, right? The banks in yeah, Kilburn, right? Basically, what it was, me and my, my my pal Nick, yeah. Now, me and Nick got a lot of history. Good friend of mine, and we were both young, and we've always been little criminals, man. Like we were little little thugs, man. You know, we weren't violent. We didn't go out and hurt people. That's one thing we didn't do. We weren't we weren't going out and hurting people specifically, like just for hurting them. The only time anyone ever got hurt was when. We wanted them to do something, as mm. in if we're doing a robbery or we're doing a crime, or and that's when it that's when only violence would be used. We weren't like violent people to go out and just start stabbing people like there is today. Mm. But it was mad because the thing the, the, when I done this, I was in Edgware Road, and I was with my other friend, and this was months and months, and months and earlier, and we was literally, and you'll know who I'm talking about little ginger we'll call him yeah little ginger and we was in the abbey national bank and we must have been about i don't know 20 and we watched a guy walking in and out with the box and we was like and he said to me that's full of money you know and i was like fuck off that info. he's like mate watch this and we, they locked us in the bank and they'd done the whole procedure in front of us and then we we're like come on fuck it now it's only one guy so we was like all right it's cool let's go do it so we did it what, there and then? No, a week later. A week later, I was going to yeah. say, off the yeah. cuff. Yeah, a week later. A week later, you thought about yeah, it. Yeah, we done it, and then we got done. <laughs> and this is, how inc- this is how, this is what makes me laugh about it, yeah, because I was so eager to get that money, I made so many bloody fucking mistakes. Mm-hmm. I left my phone in the car, panicking, trying to get out of the car, running away with this big bag of dough. You know what I mean? So I left my phone in the car. What, getting only, away, you just... Yeah, so basically, we've gone into the bank... Can I talk about my Cody? Yeah, I'm allowed yeah, to say his yeah, name, yeah. yeah? Right, me and Nick, we're in the bank. And we've basically followed the van. He's gone in. We've gone in after him. He's put the money in his chute. We've took the money back out. And off we've run. By pushing him over, the guy, the, the What, custodian. you didn't have any arm? No arm. Had, no, this was the first time I'd ever done it. Just bare hands. No land and a baseball cat upon. And then we're like, we can't keep doing it like this because we're going to get Nick. So then we put decided... So you got away with it then? Got away straight away, yeah. Got, got and you got the money, you didn't got get away, nicked yeah, for it. Yeah, got 25 grand out of it, cash in the hand. Like, so no what's problem. that? Don't they have to die in that money? Yeah, yeah, they do have to die in it. But because we were doing it going into the banks, they, you don't have them in the die because you only have die in the box. That's so, insane now. Yeah. You got away with just pushing him over. Pushing him over. Grabbed it. Grabbed the money and off you go. Run out. Yeah, and we've done that three times. We got caught for three of them, shall I say. We got we got convicted for three of them. For three of them, yeah. Yeah, and basically what happened, we seen how easy it was and then we were like come on we'll have it again you know yourself and what's the gap in between this time frame week two weeks oh, <laughs> yeah because we were like wow big money we were like oh my god big money big money it. yeah you i want more of that big it. money yeah unless yeah. it becomes like i said it becomes like a fucking 
and addiction. And then before long, you're, you're fucking running in these places on a regular basis, which thank God I, I, I weren't going in too regular because I probably wouldn't be out now. But it was it was becoming a bit of a habit, should we say. And then on the third last one that I got convicted of, so what happens? We've done a one in Edgware Road. A week later, I'll be done a one in Kilburn. Now, the thing is, this is what the media do. The media make things out to be something like they're... It was a great thing. To me, I didn't think it was a great thing. It was just common sense. So we've gone to a mosque. We bought the dresses. Like, we bought the we bought the, uh, the hijabs. Yeah. Um, we bought the normal clothing. We put it on in there. We put it on in the mosque, thinking that we weren't doing anything disrespectful because we're not thinking on religion no, and no, stuff no. like that. We're just thinking of two uh, dumb young kids. Mm. Let's put on this outfit. Let's go and hit a bank. Hit the papers. That's exactly the attitude we had, yeah? So... We went to the mosque, we put on the thing, we put on the dresses, and then we're walking out with two men. <laughs> like, I've got a man's physique, I ain't skinny little bird, you know what I mean? I've got broad shoulders, I know I look like a bloke, so me in a hijab, him in a hijab, he's six foot something, I'm five foot something. The security instantly thought, what the fuck are these up to? So they've come running at me, because I'm the smallest one. So I've had, no joke, I've had this security guy try to grab me, so I've flung him down. Next thing I had about 300 Muslims chasing me. Oh. Yeah, so I've got, they've chased me from Regent's Park Mosque, yeah, directly across the road. I've jumped in my car, doing burnouts out of that area now. They're ripping my windscreen wipers off my car. So you've gone in there just to get the, 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 the gowns. You yeah. put the gowns on and they've seen you. What, you are, are you pinching them? No, we bought them. I paid 80 fucking but quid because of the disrespect to the religion, they've taken that and now they've, they've gone for you. Yeah, so right. basically what they thought, what, well... I don't know what they were thinking, mm. but I, I bloody got convicted of burglary and I never, ever burgled nothing. I went in there, paid for it, but my mate Nick, he was like, can we put it on now? It would be a joke. Yeah. And I remember sitting there, I was like, are you serious? He's like, yeah, come on, man, it'll be a laugh. And I was like, come on then, fuck it, why not? So we put it on in the fucking mosque, which is... In disrespectful. Yeah. Which is disrespectful yeah, yeah. in the eyes of um, yeah. their religion, you yeah. know what I mean? But we didn't think of it no, like that. No. We were just young, dumb... Mm ready to go out and commit crime, you know? So anyway, we've done that, being chased away. I jumped in my car, missed a few, like they've got my windscreen wipers, a few mirrors. God. Yeah, it was a bit mad. But then we've linked up again uh, in the green estate and um, I, I, my, a lot of my friends are Muslim and they, they from that manner, you know what I mean? They're from this and green estate and they were like, fucking hell, man, what are you doing, man? Mm. And I was explaining to them, what are you talking about? This is how it is, mate. You know what I mean? We're yeah. out there, mm. we're getting money, it's nothing you've got to, to do, do whatever it takes you know yeah, yeah and they were they were sweet with it you know what i mean yeah. like the boys understood there's no disrespect in that it was we're just trying to get a, a disguise you know yeah so then literally about three hours later we're driving down kilburn Road and we've seen the van so we're like all right let's do it so park the car outside going in the geezer's doing his runs back and forth back and forth and we're standing in the queue and we're like we're waiting for us to get because i want to grab him when the queue's right next to where the thing, because we're going to look out of sorts if we're standing next to the chute where they put the money. Yeah. And if you don't need to be there. So we're trying to go in with the queue. So we've got all these people in the bank with us. And um, next thing, the geezer's there. So I've grabbed him, flung him, flung the guy across the banking hall. Nick's grabbed the money and we're off. In the car, got away. Got away. It took like no less than 30 seconds. And what is it? It's just like a suitcase thing. They hold the money yeah. in and you've just literally grabbed yeah. it. And so run off. basically what it is, when you go into a bank, back in the day, I don't know how they do it now because obviously different procedures. Yeah. But now, well, back then it was a, it's a shoot. So they'd open the box in the, in, in the foyer where we are and they'd take the money out. Bag of money, 25 grand, handheld scanner, scan it, put it in the safe. The thing would turn around and then it's on, on the secure side of the bank. Well, we would just get in before you could secure that money. And then off we'd go. And then we got done for another one, pretty much exactly the same as uh, as the other two. But that was in Hampstead. And that was, it was a bit different that time. Um, it wasn't as smooth as the others, you know. There was, uh, Nick lost a trainer. So he ended up, we had like a tussle. He ended up losing his trainer. So that was Nick caught. And what's this, another bank? Yeah, this is another bank, yeah. yeah this Hampstead, is another one. In, Hampstead, in Hampstead, yeah. 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 So, and this is uh, the same day or is this... No, a, this is a couple of weeks couple later. A couple of weeks later. Yeah. And what was the method in that? Just Exactly the same, yeah. Dresses exactly. on? Yeah, no, this time no dresses because the thing is we didn't want to do it the same every time Yeah. because that's how you get your MO. Yeah, yeah. You know, your motive of Perenda, I think they yeah, call yeah, it, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, so 
we wanted to keep it different. We wanted to see this, let's see it out and make it go as long as we could. We didn't want to get nicked. So we tried to not do the same thing every time, you know. But it catches up, man. Yeah. Yeah. So you went in there and it was just the same methodology. Same method. Smash, grab, yeah, boom, smash, grab, on. See you later. Yeah. And, and what was the... I remember we had a chat, didn't we? And there was... Uh, a, a lady that we spoke about yeah. wasn't it what happened with that one which did you did that you follow someone um, did you that follow was, someone um no i'll tell you what it was we had something planned different that day and um basically my friend the thing that we had planned didn't work out um what did you so, have planned um gotta be careful with saying this okay because just but yeah yeah don't put yourself um it's fine yeah, so fine. Uh, add, anyway. add something else planned um and it didn't turn up. So my mate said to me, look, we're all dressed up. We're ready to go here. We're all out in our suits. We've got our motors. We've, we've got all tooled up. We need to go to work. So he's told me, right, there's a, there's, there's a property developer. And he's got um, big money. Like, he's got lots of jewellery in his safe. His wife's got a load of dough. She's got big diamonds on her and all that. Now, that was never my thing. And I never liked hurting women or kids. That's not my forte. And I, I liked hurting men. Mm. You know, I did. Well, you wanted to, you you, you wanted to get them get money. money. That yeah. was direct. It wasn't like you, I like to hurt no. them, as in specifically. You wanted hurt to do them, whatever it took to get to that. Yeah, you were ruthless, men. man. Yeah. yeah, with men only, only men. I, I get that. Yeah, yeah. You, know what I mean? you had a, um, yeah. I understand what you're which, saying. Yeah. Which made me, um, and I understand that now because I was abused by only men. Mm. You know, so I do get. I, I have a better understanding of it now. That's why I sort of hated on men. You know what I mean? That's There's sort I, of like a criminal code isn't there you don't beat on women yeah, kids yeah, or anything yeah them like things that. don't yeah, happen yeah. but obviously like today the, 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 it's not like that no more no, unfortunately no, there's not not many people got morals nowadays no. you know but we did have morals we still do have morals but yeah. on that particular day my money mind was more important about my morals and that's the truth um so yeah my mates told me about this uh this move that we that he had planned up for me i was like yeah sweet i'm ready this ain't going nowhere Little did we know there was 31 armed to the police teeth around me at this time. So they're following you? They were on us big time. Cars yeah. had bugs in them, trackers. They were, yeah, they were on us properly. Like there was listening devices in the vehicles. There had trackers on the cars. Like they properly went in on us. Yeah. Rightly so, we were out being bad, you know. Yeah. So yeah. they had a job to do. It's, their job was to catch us and they, and they caught us on that day. But yeah. prior to that happening, um, he's told me about this chick and the, the safe and all that. So I was like, all right, cool. We had the angle grinders ready to cut the safes open and everything. Gone to the location out out of London. Um, and I sat there waiting for like four or five hours waiting for this person to come home. Um, when they did come home, we moved in um, and we took control of her. Um, not in a in a noncy way or nothing, but we obviously grabbed her, grabbed her up, yeah. you know, put her on the floor relieved of her jewellery and her door keys because obviously we wanted to go into her house to get to the safe, cut the safe open, get the jewellery. Um, but it was all weird. The whole thing was weird. Didn't sit well with me at all. Mm. And when I look back at it, it was meant to be. Mm. I was meant to go to jail in that fashion. That was how it was going to happen for me. That was a changeover because when I got nicked for that, it was mad because we we done the robbery on her. And it just felt scatty from the second, from the outset. My mate, just before we done the robbery, my mate said, Ant, can't we just fuck this off, man? Let's go home. And I was like, are you mad? We're not going home. I said, fucking, we've been here all day, mate. Like, I'm on the run. I'm living in hotels right now. I need this money, mate. You know, she's got to go, isn't it? Like, and that's how it was, yeah? And then um, she's come home. And we've got her on her doorstep, wrapped her up, which is fucking horrible, man. <laughs> So you've gone in there, you've grabbed her, she's screaming. She tried to scream. Yep. Put my hand over the mouth, told her straight away, um, shut up, basically. My friend choked her out. What, unconscious? Tried to, but she didn't go. Thank okay. God. Thank God, you know. That was... Uh, um, and took her jewellery off of her, took her handbag off of her, and was going to go into her house. I said to her, where do you live? And I remember her face, and I'll never forget her face, mate. And that was it. I left the building there and then. Really? Yeah. Just left the building. Out. We walked away from it straight away. I just I don't know. It's just something that weren't right about that. And I felt that. I felt that whilst that was going on, I could feel that this is not right. Mm. You know, you, have, you all have your own inside intuition, your own feelings, your gut feeling. And that day, that weren't going. That's it's not me. Mm. I weren't like that. You know. 
And um, we've run away from there. And there was police all the way around us. We was literally everywhere. Old Bill was everywhere. So I've jumped in my stolen car, sped off. My other mate is in his car. Got around the corner. Two of the boys have jumped out and gone into that car. Now me and my brother-in-law are staying in this car. Now we've gone from Radlett in Hertfordshire to Hendon. Got to Hendon. Um, I little did I know I'm driving up the motorway like at speed. I didn't recognise, didn't notice. And the funniest thing, it's not funny, but I said it to my to to my, my brother in law. I said, Bro, I said if the fucking feds are watching us now, they're gonna think we're fucking amateurs. It's exactly the word I said, mate. And they were watching. They were fucking watching. Really? And they were following us up and down the motorways like maniacs. And then we got into Holston and we've all got into what sorry, we got into Golders Green. We've all got into one car. I was looking at diamond earrings in the back seat of the car. Like as you would do of another robbery. Um, sitting in the back seat of the motor, next thing, boom, it's a big smash to the right of us, yeah. And I've looked and I've and I've hit Peter, my mate, sorry, uh, the driver. Fucking feds, mate. Fucking go. Go is what I'm saying. Next thing I've been crashed into from this side, smashed into this side. Next thing I'm seeing handguns coming out everywhere, hats going on. Next thing, the windows have all come in through on the car. And I'm thinking, you fucking idiot. Why ain't you driving the car? It, all this is going on. And I'm shouting at the driver, fucking drive. You know, obviously he shit his pants. You yeah. know, as soon as he starts seeing Glock 17s getting put in your yeah, face yeah, and all yeah. that, they're like... Never happened to you before in your life. When that happens, you know... You're yeah, it's scary, man. Yeah. It's, it's scary. But, you know, it's, it's weird because all I remember... I remember, like, the windows coming through... I remember realising it was old Bill. I remember realising this is it now. And then all the windows have come through and they had these hammers. You know the hammers that you smashed the, pub, uh, the bus windows with back yeah. in the day? Yeah, yeah. And they're smashing my brother-in-law in the head with this really? hammer. Yeah. Like their hands are in the window like, and they're hitting him. And I put my hands over their head and they've hit my hands and I've, I pulled my, and that was it. They pulled my arms out the back window. They're trying to grind my arms up the window, you know, to cut me and all that. Because... Obviously, they want to hurt us. We're horrible robbing bastards. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, we've just robbed a chick. They don't know the reasoning behind that. But it is what it is. You know what I mean? They, they, they're they only going on what they've they've been told by their other mm. flying squad officers. So then we've basically been absolutely annihilated, smashed to pieces. Fucking all the cars being smashed up. We were out on the pavement. And I've turned around and I, I knew who it was. I knew it was flying squad. Because I've had, like... Oh, you have to be aware of these people. You know, when you're a criminal and you're in that sort of criminal world, of you've got to know what sort of police are going to be trying to get you. You know, I mean, it's not going to be the average PC no. that you see on the street. You've got to have armed police on yeah, you. And they're serious dudes, them armed mm. police. You know, they're like, pff, they'll kill you. And on that particular day, I believed that they were going to kill me because in their paperwork, they said they had reason to believe that I was in possession of two firearms. So it's like, they yeah. had the intent. It's if I had anything in my hand that day, I would have probably got murdered by the whole bill, you know what I mean? But that's the life, you mm -hmm. know? And unfortunately, I was lucky for, uh, well, fortunately for me, you know, I was very lucky, you know what I mean? But I'm fortunate all the shit that's caused. Do you mm. know what I mean? That's caused a lot of trouble, man. So once this has happened, Dan, you, you've been nicked uh, in the car. Yeah. And obviously you've been put inside for how long? I was in jail at that for that stint four and a half years that and month. where did you go in prison for that? I went everywhere I went absolutely everywhere I went first of all I went to Scrubs prison at first sorry I went to Wandsworth I was in Wandsworth and I seen all my mates in there yeah. like this is the maddest thing about it like I've all like, the criminal world yeah all of our powers they're all slightly criminal it's only a few that become successful or pull away from it so they're not criminal at all which is good you know but I've gone to jail and I was on, I remember I was on A-Wing in Wandsworth and I seen, um, I seen all my pals that I hadn't seen for years, man. Literally. It was like that. I was like, how you doing boys? How you doing? Like, good to see you, you know? But this is where the treachery comes into it now. I remember someone saying um, about um, people taking blame and stuff like that. And I was going to stab one of my codees over it. I was going to kill him. Like, because apparently um, he's turned around. This is what I mean about the criminal world is not as glamorous as what people think it is, you know? Yeah. So, um, basically what happens, someone's talking shit in the street and said that if, uh, if I don't take the blame, someone's going to do something to my mum. So my, 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 my thing, I'm going to kill you right now. 
So that was the plan. I was going to kill him in the prison cell. And that was the attitude I had. And I was I've gone up there and I was going to kill him in the cell. So someone has said that you've got to take a flack for a crime so, that yes, you didn't it was, commit. It was people chatting shit. And, yeah, you know, yeah. People chatting yeah, yeah, shit yeah. to try and cause more. Because people, you've got to bear in mind, people are bored in prison. Yeah. All they've got is what's going on in the wing. Yeah. You know, so they're going to try and chat shit and try and cause drama for entertainment. Mm. That's what they do, you know. Yeah. Um, so basically, I've gone up there. I had to fucking talk and I was going to fucking give it to him in a cell. That was exactly what my mindset was. You're fucking getting it. Because I ain't, no one threatens me, mate. Not like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, um, yeah, it was all a load of bullshit. Absolute load of bullshit. And then he moved wing um, and it was just like. Did anything happen? Nothing did, happened. Did it get broken up it before got, it happened? And, and see, this is the thing, yeah. His older brother, I seen him on a visit, yeah. And I get on, well, they're good family. Like their their people are good people. Stephen in particular, you know what I mean? I'm not going to say the second name or nothing, but good people, you know what I mean? And um, he's like, Ant, bruv, the people are chatting shit. Give me a hug. He's like, bro, listen, it's not like that. And I believed him. It's just, that's what I mean by, you see, you think people are your friends and they're really fucking not. You know mm. what I mean? Like you've got people that I thought were my friends, shit stirring, you know? And then it's just like, it's negative, man. It's just, you know, like that world is not good, man. Even though when you get into jail, you're in jail, the drama don't stop there. You know, if you've got money, if you're a successful robber, people save their money, you know? So then when you're in prison and you've got people out there with not much money, they know that you're sat on a lump of money and you're in jail. They want a piece of that, you know what I mean? So it's... How does it work in there, Anto, prison? Because everyone has this sort of perception that it's violent. It is violent, very violent. I got stabbed a few times in prison. You got stabbed? Yeah. Tell me about that. I got um, I got stabbed in my chest. I got nine stitches down my chest here. Sliced. That's what, a prison what? fight. Just, just fighting around. in jail. Yeah, fighting, getting into fights. People disrespect you, and then. So what? You talk me through it. So what disrespect are we talking about? Someone walking past you just can be anything. Literally anything. You like you got to bear in mind. You got a lot of people to suffer from mental health in jail. Yeah. You know what I mean. So you've got not the average person. You ain't got normal citizens on prison wings. No. Like I'd say a good fifty percent of them people on pr each prison wing you go in are suffering from some kind of psychosis, mental health disorder paranoid disorder or whatever but they are sick hence they're in jail you know what i mean obviously not just before their mental health but you can say something to the wrong person one day and they'll fucking slice you to pieces like it, you see people i've seen people i was in swell side one story i see a man get hot oiled yeah over burn over tobacco Shh. and this was a hot tub of oil going over a man's head you know what I'm saying? In the kitchens. Because okay. when I was in prison back in the day, when I was in Swell Side, used to be called Stab Side, yeah? It's a first stage life of prison. So only long termers go there. Now, I went there. I was the only one on my landing, on my spur, that wasn't doing life. You know, all of them were doing big sentences, yeah. like massive sentences, 32 years, 28 years, 16 years. And I'll be talking to them and they'll be like, yo, Ant, how long are you doing? And I'll be like, I'm only doing eight. And they're like, baby bird. You know what I mean? <laughs> And I was like, right, I'm around a lot of naughty fucking people here. You know, these boys have got absolutely fuck all to lose. But mm. they're the nicest guys, man. Mm. I know that sounds mad. No. You know, no. like you think all these violent criminals are horrible people, but they're, they're bloody not, man. They're no different to us. A lot of these people just act in anger, you know, and they fucking end up hitting someone, stabbing someone. It's, a lot of these things happen, you know. Yeah, yeah. But if, I, if violent is very violent, but you don't just, it's, see the thing is with jail, you have to worry about everybody. You have to worry about your, the screws. You got to keep an eye on the prisoners. You got to keep an eye on yourself. Make sure you don't interact with the wrong people. You know what I mean? You got to like when I was in prison myself. On my last sentence, my last sentence was the, my final sentence I'll ever commit. I will never go back to jail ever again as long as I live. I'm pretty much sure of that mm. because I found it so hard in there. Um, I tell you what, I found it the most hardest part was my misses because when I went on my last sentences, I didn't have anything really that was holding me and making me be good. On my last sentence, I'd already decided to change. I already made steps to that change. And then I got drawn out and then I'm going to jail because cause I acted on impulse. Instead of instead of doing the right thing, I went mental and obviously jumped out of the motor and tried to uh, fucking kill the guy, you know what I mean? But What was this, just a normal road traffic? And No, no, this was a, this was a, see where it was, yeah. After 2015, after after the the robbery on the woman, 
Yeah, what really made me change was her impact statement. Now, her impact statement was the light that some people need to see. I know that sounds a bit funny, but everyone needs that pivotal point in their life that changes them. It could either be an overdose on drugs, it could be losing a family member, it could be anything. But with me, it was my my victim's impact statement. And that was overwhelming, like to say the least. Like even to this day, I feel horrendous on how I made that woman feel. And that woman, that one lady has changed me just through her words, which I believe is very powerful, you know, and it's, what what in particular? Basically, when she when we were robbing her and taking her jewelry off of her, she felt that she was going to be abused. Yeah, and that is is my it's my whole life I've been abused. Yeah. You know, and sort it, of it's bad. Rang true with you. Yeah. yeah, but on an emotional level, it made me feel so like, oh, mm. how the fuck did I make her feel like that? That was never my intention. I didn't, never meant to make her feel like that, and for me to make her feel like that. It's disgusting. I hate myself for it. Like, I actually do. Mm. Like, the men, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I don't feel for the men victims that I've created. I just can't. Mm. But I understand that. That goes back to being abused multiple times as a kid and going through care homes and watching my stepdad batter my mum and all that. And, and do you know what I mean? I'm watching the violence. It's all to do with men, men, mm. men, men. Psychological. Violence, you know what I mean? Yeah. So... For me to have that feeling towards men, I don't feel empathy or remorse towards men, which is, it's not good. Mm. But I did with 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 my last victim, mm. and that was what what changed me. I think you you obviously referring to when you was dealing with men when you were at the prime in, in committing crime. Obviously now you do yeah. have obviously you feel you, because you're a reformed character now, yeah. and we'll we'll get onto that. What's it like? And tell me. When you are going to prison and you, you're convicted Scary. and you're put in there and, and you've got your missus. It's hard. And you've got your, your your family and do you feel helpless? How does that feel? Yeah, helpless is a good word, man. Um, desperate at some stages. Desperate, you know. Um, I remember coming before here. I said it to my missus. I woke up this morning and obviously coming in and talking about my life and it's the first time I've ever done this. And... Um, I get uh, like excited sort of thing. But it's very, it's hard to say. You know the feeling of when you're pacing a room, you're pacing a room. When you're in jail, you're in this little room, say the size of this table. And that's the space you've got to walk in. And all you've got is your thoughts, you know. And it's very depressing, man. You've got governors coming that are horrible fucking bastards. Some of them are fuckers, mate, honestly. Some of them are damn right nasty and they will hurt you. But like, just, just yeah, just violent. Hard. Yeah, violent. I'll, I'll tell you one incident. Um, it was on my last sentence. I've always been a handful with the system because uh, I wouldn't say I felt sorry for myself, but I sort of did. You know, I went through so much shit as a kid that I shouldn't have gone through and it went through none of my fault. Like I didn't ask for none of that crap, you know what I mean? So it made me kind of hard, but it made me angry as well. So when I'm in jail, I have total disrespect for these screws. Not all of them. The ones that are good, I'll tell them that they're good and I'll be polite. But the ones that are horrible, I'm blatantly horrible too. Mm. And on this particular sentence, because I, I didn't feel like I deserved to be in jail. Yeah, Joe. And because all the other times I've been to prison, it's been for committing crime. It's been for getting money, you know. And and all of my crimes have been motivated by money. They haven't been motivated by anything other than finance, you know. Um, and on this particular time, I was in jail and I was very depressed, man. Like I felt suicidal at times. Like I'm not joking when I said suicidal. I wanted to do it a couple of times, a good few times. But my missus and my kids, I couldn't leave them, you know. But the depressive side of it is is torture, mate. Like I remember on this particular visit, my wife come up to see me, and I was in high point this time, and I hated these women that was around me, these two fat screws, yeah, and they were horrible. They were just nasty people. They they basically come into jail on this day and they just be horrible to people, mouthy fucking horrible bastards. These women were, yeah, honestly, they they've like, I wouldn't say they were men haters, but they were along that line, yeah. And I was on basic this time because I was getting into fights, getting into trouble because I couldn't accept that I'm in jail. I'm in prison for 
nothing and I will get to, I'll tell you the reason why I went to jail um, and I was I didn't I didn't deserve to be in jail I would really tried Joe to change like I really took steps I'd done the therapeutic communities I sat around fucking dirty nonces and all that to try and fix me you know what I mean and to sit in a fucking room with these animals and not stamp on their head you know it's very hard not mm. to hurt these people considering you know what they've done mm. and um, I was uh I didn't feel like I deserved this. Now, when I got arrested and I got convicted, and I got the 12 years reduced to eight, I accepted that. I was a bad boy. I deserve it. That's fine. Could have got longer. I was lucky I didn't. Yeah. And that was the attitude I had. Yeah. But on my last sentence, I didn't have that attitude. I felt so depressed that for 30 odd years, all I wanted was a family. Like all I wanted was a family. I wanted a dad. Never had a dad. My father slit his throat when me and my brother were little kids, picked us up, told us he loved us and goodbye. And that was fucking 30 odd years ago. That was the last thing I remember of my dad as a kid. That's my real dad. Who fucking slices their throat open, mm. man, and then picks your kids up, gives them a kiss, goodbye, and then goes like, and then you wonder why the kid comes out a bit of a mess, yeah. you know? And I was, on the, I was on the prison, I was on the visit, and my missus has come up because of my behavior, I weren't having it. I had phones, I was taking drugs, and I had to take drugs. I'll tell you why, because if I didn't take the drugs, I probably wouldn't be sat here in front of you today. And that's the truth. What drugs were you taking in there? I was, t I was just taking, I, s I smoked that spice in jail. Really? Yeah, it's What's a horrible that? drug, man. Absolutely horrible. That's Absolutely the one where you see the tramps horrible. in London Mate, and there. Yeah. yeah, disgusting drug. Absolutely fucking disgusting, man. You know when you sit there and you look at it, but then you think, I needed to not be in my own mind. Mm. And... That is a fucked up place to be, mate. Mm. Now, let me tell you that. You know, when you can't be sober because you can't deal with feelings or emotions, you can't think anymore because you're fucking sick to death of your thoughts, you know? And and that's where it was. You Like, you got 30 years of bull, pure grief, man. Like, never had a mum, never had a dad. Was running away from care homes consistently and obviously all the time. Never getting no love, never getting hugs, never being told you're loved. Like, these are all things that everybody wants. Mm. Everybody wants them. Yeah, things. yeah. I'm no different to anyone else. The only thing is, I was so hungry for that. I wanted to be loved. I wanted to have the family life. When I had it, I didn't know what I had. You know what I mean? Like, when I, my ex-partner, for instance, like, me and I, we've got three kids together. And when I got, so the thing is, it's a very long story of mine, you know what I mean? It's very, there's so much crap in there, you know what I mean? You've got like the fact that I come out of care home at 16 years of age and didn't even know how to make beans on toast. Mm -hmm. So you've got the social services, you take this young man away from his family at six years old, you keep him for 10 years, you don't educate him, you don't teach him how to fucking budget money, you don't teach him how to, to budget your cooking, your food bill, your weekly food bill, you don't teach him nothing. So he comes out at 16, he hasn't got a fucking clue. He doesn't get on with his mum. Doesn't get on with his dad because he ain't got one. Family don't really want him around because he's a pain in the ass. And that was me. Yeah. I was the pain in the ass. You know what I mean? What's this, so the system in general, because obviously you've been in and out of care homes, you've been mm. in and out of prison. Yeah. And did you feel obviously the care homes didn't work for you at all? Mm. You were in and out of them constantly. Yeah. Um, you was abused. And then obviously you led the life of crime. You went yeah. into prison. What's your overall thoughts about prison and reform? Do there you is feel no reform in no? jail? No, definitely not. And and it's something that Terry Ellis said the other day as well. And it's spot on the money. There is no rehabilitation in prison. It's just a word, mm. and that's a fact. There is absolutely no rehabilitation in any prison I've been to. They try and spin it like it's oh yeah we're here we're going to help you reduce crime in your and all of that, but it's a load of bullshit. I believe this. Like I've been in enough prisons to see how the rehab goes uh, or how the rehabilitation goes, and it's 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 inadequate by far. Like you you you're banged up twenty three hours a day. You can't rehabilitate anybody who is confined to a cell no. the size of this table for twenty three hours a day. On my last sentence, this is what drives me insane about prisons. On my last sentence, I for so six months they kept me on the wing. They didn't even let us have air as in go out on the exercise yard. So the only time I'd actually be able to go out and breathe fresh air was when I my missus would come to visit me. Thank God she visited quite a lot, you know. 
Um, so every couple of weeks, every two weeks, I'd be out on a visit seeing my partner and I'd be able to walk from the wing to the visiting hall and that's when I'd get fresh air. Oh, but when I was on Ellis Wing in, um, in the Mount Prison, because a lot of drugs were coming over the fence and drones, everyone's getting parcels and whatnot, they locked off the, the exercise yard. So you got, say, 200 men a lot of these men are not going to education because there is not enough education spaces within the prison f to educate, let alone half the prisoners. So you've got loads of people banged up in their cell. Angry men, you know. You come, think about it, you're locked in your cell all day, you're fed. It's like fucking, it's a joke. What they, I remember, I'll never forget this year, Joe. I was sat in my cell one time, yeah, and I had a mobile phone on my last sentence, yeah. Right, everyone's got them in there. I'm sure you've heard of this year. Yeah, yeah. So, now, I'm a strong man. I've been through a load of shit in my life. Physically, I can handle myself. Mentally, I'm a little bit broken from some of the shit that's happened in my life, but that's 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 okay, you know what I mean? But with the prison system the way it is now, they get people, they put people in jail, you come out of jail, they've got no places to home people, or they exaggerate and put, they've either got no places for you, or they put you into a hostel. Now, these hostels are like set up in a way for you to fail it, you only got yourself to blame for. Like when I come out in my first hostel, I was in hostel for nine months, man, and I went through shit with these fuckers, man. I was like there for nine months, and then you have to be here, you have to sign on, and all that, which is good, I suppose, because they're trying to stop me from committing more crime and whatnot. But the rehabilitation side of it, there isn't. There mm. just isn't. Like, how can you rehabilitate someone who's in a cell all day? That's why I always, you know. Being in a confined space for 23 hours a day and not being able to even go out and exercise. And it does, you do make wonder that uh, why people lead to drugs in there and, and because they're just driving them insane. But then I suppose you will get people on the other hand that say, you know, well, some people in there ain't worth helping and then that's some true. people committed crime, they, sh they deserve that's, that. That's but true as well. overall, you need to figure out that, you know, people in prison and that's what it's designed to do is to reform people that have committed crimes so they can go yeah. back into society i think a lot of the change has got to come within though to yeah. be fair you've got a desire you've got to want it yourself yeah of course yeah like, i didn't want to be a criminal no more i actually didn't want to hurt anyone else that's what stopped me from being a criminal that completely i didn't want to be like this no more and i i didn't like it that i could walk away from certain situations not feeling anything mm. i didn't like that so what about now and so you no. where, how long have you been out of prison for i've been out of jail three years now yeah i've been out of jail three years i haven't even been spoken to any copper that has had a chat with me is john wesner you know and he's, yeah. i get on well with john he's a nice guy yeah. you know and um yeah i'm keeping my head out of trouble man that's good I've got a different road now telling your story yeah that's right and hopefully maybe some other guys will have a bit of hope in their life because you know that's the only thing we have is hope you know you might be in a care home right now yeah, and this is, I will never forget this, yeah. I remember being in my boarding school and I was in my own little room and I remember sitting on that bed, closing my eyes. This is honest to God, this is no joke, mate. Closing my eyes, counting to 30. I'll open my eyes, I'll be back at home at mummy's. Now that makes me want to cry even saying that because it, I, remind, it remind, I remember all them feelings, you know. And from going from that, going from that faraway place around all them fucked up people to where I am now, it's it's gone full circle mm. literally it's gone full circle i've got everything i want now i've got a beautiful wife like my best friend in the world is my missus like it's me and her all the way her family are fucking amazing like they've accepted me i'm on paper i'm a horrible bastard you know mm. i've done some real bad things to people and i do hold serious remorse for the things i've done mm. like i generally am sorry like, yes and, you know what would you say and to uh... To anyone that would be watching this, like anyone that could be in the it's midst of glorious. crime, but they're actually committing crime or they're You're actually get caught, man. Look, you might be lucky in it. You might be lucky. You might get a good run. You might get a few years on it, uh, but you're going to get caught, man. And you know, like it's not as glamorous as people think. Like they think, oh, this robbing shit is amazing. I'm going to get paid. I don't have to pay tax. I don't have to do. It. I'm going to be wealthy. I'm going to. It's not. It don't work like that. Because when people know you're at it, you see, you've got villains. You've got robbers. You've got all walks of life in the criminal world. You've got some real naughty criminals that are worse than normal criminals. And they'll quite happily come into your house at night time, tie you and your kids up, demand the money of you. 
you know and these are the people that could be plotting on you could be you know what i'm saying so you're not just worrying about the police you don't have to worry of, you, like this is my perspective on it yeah i didn't have to worry about just the police i was worried about people coming to get me people that i knew people trying to snake me so to speak like as in set you up rob you you know um steal your money take your sister hostage they know you've just had 30 grand off so they grab your sister mate you're going to give that 30 grand over or you're not getting your sister back you know what i mean this is this is the this is the role. what this is what was going through your head yeah these, no these things do happen oh, these, you know? yeah, yeah. this is what i mean by the criminal world it's not as glorious as what people no. make it out to be like mm. you see it on the movies Ah, oh, these bank robbers amazing it's not there's it's almost not. this romantic i was speaking to you about it before we were filming and people do think like you look at the cray twins and, yeah. and like, everyone thinks that like in the films and now there's sort of a romantic it's thing not. to it you know you live a glamorous life it's, exciting. <laughs> it's the polar polar opposite but it is very frightening as well like literally like it can it can change Mm. in a click of an instance like it did with me like one minute you're driving down the road thinking that everything's fine next thing you've got 30 armed old bill pointing guns at your face and i'm not kidding but the gun was like that far away from my forehead you know what i mean and i could all i could see was his lips moving i could see the gun and i could see his lips that was it because all of this shit was going on i was just looked at him and i was like fuck wow this is happening you know what i mean it is it, it, that it's insane i suppose when you're sitting in a confined space for 23 hours a day for yeah. years and years and years yeah, you, you, you start to wonder why is it worth it yeah it's not i've it got actually a, ain't. i've got a, what happened to your ear i got bit enough <laughs> you got to tell me about that then yeah well basically um yeah i'd come out of jail uh had a fight uh with a geezer I won't mention his name because i can't stand him <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, had a had a fight with him. He bit it off, basically. What, just a normal fist fight in the street? Yeah, yeah. We had a fight in the street. Uh, well, it's outside his house. Uh, it's actually inside his house. I tell you exactly what happened. We had a fight inside his hallway. His dog was hanging off my arm. Yeah, and uh, obviously I come out of jail. I was a big lad, you know what I mean. So I've had hold of him, and he couldn't really do nothing. What is this nothing. recently? Or this is a good few years ago. Right, okay. A few years ago. I will tell you. Comp I won't tell you the whole story. Because obviously I'm saving some for my book and stuff like that. Okay, yeah, yeah. But I'll just do the outlines of it for you. Basically, he bit me ear off and spat it out. Dog ate it. Um, the dog ate it? Yeah, the dog ate it. <sighs> Bloody hell. Um, yeah, and that was really it, to be fair. It was nothing dramatic. It's just a fight. Like, yeah, yeah. Bit me ear off. And that's it. And that's it, really. <laughs> yeah, like, it's just one, of them, just one of them things. Obviously, it's not just one of them things. It's not normal to have your ear bitten off, but... No, nah. it's just one of them things, isn't it? <laughs> Easy. I mean, it is uh, when you over look from an overall perspective, sort of the life you've led and the life of crime, and psychologically, how you I, I've spoken to people and speaking to yourself, and how at a young age it affects you mentally and what, what how you want to hate, how you want to get into this life of crime. And sometimes kids have a real shit deal. They do. as a young age yeah, don't they they've yeah. got no yeah. other fucking choice in life so, and they have a real shit deal and true. and that's why i look at some people you know when they're on the street and and you look at and everyone goes oh well he's a, he's a they've got a story he's a drug him. addict he's yeah. this he's why that he a drug addict but you know he, he might have had a shit life some people are not yeah. you can't help i yeah. know but there's certainly a lot of kids out there like yourself now that trauma that, has ruined them. yeah yeah 100 percent um if i i honestly believe if I hadn't have gone to care and I didn't get abused when I was free, there's no way I would have turned out the way I did. Mm. I, don't, I don't believe I would have because if I'd been given that normal structure like my kids, I give my kids what they need. Like I was a terrible dad. Look, I'm not going to lie to you, yeah? When I was 16 and I had my kids and I didn't know how to be a dad, you know? I've got three kids with my ex. I love my children very much, but when I come out at 16 years of age out of the care system, I didn't know how to be a father you know i didn't know how to to change a fucking nappy you know i didn't know how to be a loving dad i didn't even know how to love myself let alone my, my still ex. a kid didn't you? yeah i was still a kid you know <clears throat> and then obviously because of all that shit in the beginning all the trauma all the abuse the seeing your fucking stepfather battering your mum you know seeing all of that it makes you hate the world man like you, I, I hated the world. I, I fucking hated everybody in it, and I just, 
I was a very angry man, you know, mm -hmm. very angry. Um, up until I met my missus, it was like my best friend. Mm. I've been looking for 30 years for this. So you could imagine this, yeah. All them years of stress, pain, inflicted, I've inflicted pain, I've had pain inflicted on me to then meet this woman and totally fall in love with her. And that's exactly how it was. I met her and I was talking to her for five years before she was my missus, you know what I mean? And then we became partners and the, the rest is history. But because I come out of jail with a different mindset, about behaving, starting a family, met this lovely woman. Now's the change. Now's Trying just, to be happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now's the time to change, you know, and I got it. But because because of old pasts, people wouldn't let me do that. You know, they kept to people try and draw people you were with. People I yeah, knew, yeah. people like, they, they wouldn't accept that Anthony doesn't want to be like that no more. And he was different now. And he wants to do this life thing. Bear in mind, for 30 odd years, all I've wanted was a mother, a father, a family. Mm. I want to be a part of a family. I want my own team. So now I've got my team. I've got my partner. I've got my boys. I've got my daughters. You know, I've got, I've got my, I've got my family. I finally got it. It took 30 odd years to get there, but I got there. And that's what I want to say to the younger kids of today. You know, like and the kids that are in care homes, the kids that are going through shit in their life. Like you might think right now that you're not going to get it. You might not get it right now. You might be me like me you might have to wait 30 fucking years but you will get it mm -hmm. you know and you just gotta keep hoping keep hoping keep having some sort of like have have hope in yourself man like i've i i wouldn't say i'm a i wouldn't say i'm a uh what's the word i wouldn't say i'm a born again christian but i believe in god mm. and i do you know and i believe when a good thing happens to me i'm like i appreciate that thank you man and i do try my best now to like, if I see a homeless man by my house, I'll make sure me and Just my missus. Just to try and do yeah, good. Give him stuff, yeah. little man. things. Give yeah. him food, man. Yeah. Like That's my good. missus is a sublime chef. Mm. Hence, I've got put on the stones since <laughs> I've been out of jail. You know what I mean? She can cook, Joe. Yeah, man. yeah. But we'll give the homeless man big food, man. We'll, come, we'll give him a nice hot plate of food, some cookies, and mm. mine. Do you know what I mean? Because it's good to do good things. It, it, it comes back at you. Well, it does. I don't, do you know what it is? Yeah, I remember being that guy, mate. I remember being in cars, fucking shivering. And not having no warm blanket, not having warm mm. food. I remember you know having it's fucking like. steel car stereos just to put food in my belly, you know. And I remember them days, man. And and up until when I was on a run 2016, just before I got um, arrested for attempted murders on the police, I um, I was sleeping in the car then because I was wanted and I, and I got what I wanted. And this is where I mean by people drawing you out and you falling for it and then it can end up so much worse. These mm. people drawed me out and I acted like I would normally do. I jump out and I act violent. Even if I don't want to be violent, you're programmed to be violent. Yeah. Because another thing as well, like with the care homes, five Claverton street, four Sherland road, Beechcroft house, these places, these kids were being sold. These kids from these children's homes that I was in, they were going to the fucking members of parliament, Dolphin Square. Beautiful rings. Yeah. You know what I mean? These kids where I was were going to these places and I was there when all this shit was happening. But yeah. I was that aggressive kid. This shit didn't... I was lucky, you know, because I think without my being as aggressive as I was and being as angry as I was, maybe I would have been a lot more of a victim than I am. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it you does. Know? And that's what made me... Um, I think that's my, you know, some people have a, a, a blanket they put around of a comfort thing. My mum was to be aggressive because it stopped people from hurting you. Yeah, no, I you completely know? get that. I was going to track back on you there, Dan. Did you say attempted murder on the police? Yeah, two of them. Mm. You got to tell that story. Yeah, yeah. Basically, what it was, um, I come out of jail 2015, completely different mindset. Uh, wanted to do good, wanted to settle down, have a family, chasing the right woman. Got her in the end. And, um, we moved away together. Well, I moved from, because I lived in Milton Kings at the time, I moved down to London, back to London. Um, because what happened was, I wanted to move to get away from my partner. Basically what it was, because of all the old past, me being in London wouldn't have been good. So I said, what I'll do is I'll go to Milton Kings. It's a fresh start, it's better that way. I'm not in your face, you're not in my face, we'll get on. So it was that way. And then obviously I met my partner who I'm with now, my ex-partner really didn't like that. Just caused a whole heap of shit for me. Made up fake allegations, said that I was stalking her. Now, the good thing about the hostel, 
um, which I'm very fortunate about, is because I had to sign in. Because my robberies were not on my doorstep, I had to venture out to commit robberies. They would put a timing date on it, so I'd have to come into my hostel and sign at a certain time. So what she did is she said that I was stalking her because she used my past against me, my care records, my violent behaviour, which is very kind of bad, actually. You mm. don't do that to people, but she had her reasons. Um, so she um, she was jealous, which I can understand. You know what I mean? I can understand. I, I didn't change for her. I changed for someone else, so I understand that hurt her. But she made so many allegations against me, got an injunction out of me, which I was kind of happy about because that means I don't have to see you then. So you can't see me, I can't see you, that's yeah. good, you know. But on this particular thing, she said that I was stalking out the school, stalking out the school, and I was like, what the fuck? I said, how is this? This is impossible. So I've took my, um, I've gone to the staff in the hostel, and I said, look, I need all them signatures. I was there for three months, three o'clock, every day, my signature, bang, 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 bang. Proof, it would yeah. be impossible mm. to get from Milton Kings to Harrow in 25 minutes. Mm. So the police were like, it's a load of shit. But they did. However, the court still put that injunction in place. So I was like, I couldn't care less, mm. to be fair. But what did affect me was when I moved from London, when I moved from Milton Kings back to London, my, I was with my new partner. We moved in together. And this was a, sl a, grow, a slowly gradual thing. We've got together. We've ended up moving in. Now I'm in London. Now my new partner is in the same area as my ex-partner, which is not ideal. But it is what it is, you know. You've got your life. You're you're with a new fella. I'm happy for you. Get on with your life. Let me do myself, yeah. So, doing the school runs, driving down the road, and she's got my kid. I'm driving past my kids now, yeah, and I can't even stop to say hello to them. So I'm I'm giving them a little wave, like you're mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Next thing, she's managed to get my kids to stick their fingers up at me. Yeah, man, this is real deep shit. Like, honest, this is no joke, yeah. So basically, she's only doing that because I'm with with my missus. And she's pissed that I, she didn't let me see my kids for three years while I was in jail. I've come out of prison. Why am I going to want to be with her? You mm. know, that's just the truth, man. Plus, it was a toxic relationship. We were never good for each other. And it took 10 years of bullshit to come to that realisation. Come to that, that this is Poison, you know what I mm. mean? So, what happened was next is the kids are at school. And um, this is what I mean by escalation. I always escalate things. It always goes very further with me. It's not the norm. Mm. Like violence will occur, and it's not. I don't mean it. It's just fucking just it the way happens. you are. Yeah, it yeah. just happens. And on this particular time, basically, um, we're going to the school run, and we've picked the kids up from school on a Friday, and a little man's got out of the car, and he's like, "Oh, the kids are saying this." So these other kids are, are now starting on my missus's kids. So I'm like, "I'm not having this." Yeah, you don't bring the kids into this shit. This is an adult thing. We'll deal with it as adults, yeah? But I'm very fiery. I lose my temper in an instant, yeah? So I've got out of the car, like, and my missus is like, don't, just don't. <laughs> so I'm like, no, I am doing this. People ain't doing this shit. This is not happening, yeah? And for one, it's a stranger. If it was my daughter having a go at my missus's kid, I can't really say no, much. I, I blood, wouldn't be yeah. happy about it, but this is a complete and utter stranger. So in my eyes, you're now inviting yourself in to get it. Because mm. now you're involving yourself in my life, yeah? Mm. And I don't know you. So I will deal with you whatever way I feel fit to. And if that means putting you in the fucking ground, mm. then so be it, mate. You know what I mean? You're bringing your shit to me. Yeah. I'm not bringing my shit to you, yeah? So basically, I've ended up um, doing a school run and picked the kid up. Kids started arguing. And that. Kids started, I said, what's the matter? And the, the kids like, oh, they're saying that and saying this. I was like, all right, sweet. So I got out of the car, pulled the parents and said, come here. And I tried my best, Joe, yeah, to be polite. I really did. I generally did. I was like trying to be like um, nice, but mm. not nice, but trying to be formal. Assertive but pleasant. in a way, yeah. Yeah, yeah assertive, that's the word. And she's like, yeah, what, you think you're big bag fucking Anthony? She mm. said that to me and that was it. I said, fucking wind your neck in, you stupid cunt, yeah? I will fucking smash your fella to bits. I won't do you. Yeah, because you're a bird, but I will bust up your fella, innit? Yeah, and that was that's what come out. So then, anyway, him thinking he's a bad man has the next Monday's come. Now, I'm I'm a thinker. See, the thing is, I'll sit there and I'll fester on this for five days straight, yeah, and that's exactly winding what yourself I do, up, yeah, yeah, and I will wind myself up to the point where I will go and do something stupid, yeah. And on that particular day, I had a choice of weapons kitchen knife or hammer, 
because I knew this fella was going to come to the school and I knew I was going to give it to him if he did. So I was thinking, what one should I give him it? Should I do him with the knife or should I do him with the hammer? So then I thought, let's put the knife away because I'll kill this guy. That's the thought, honestly. So I put my tool bag in my boot in my car, like I'm going to work. I wasn't even going to work that day, but the tools were in the back anyway, like I was. This geezer jumped out in front of the car with his hands down his trousers. Now, to me, you're hiding a weapon. And only, only for the fact that my missus was driving, I would have killed him there and then. I would have killed him on the spot. I would have run him down. That would have been the end of him. That would have happened. And I would have still been in jail right now, which I'm so glad didn't happen, did happen that know? way. But thinking about it makes me fucking so angry. Mm. You know, because it's like, I can tell, yeah. how dare you fuckers do this to mm. me when you ain't got a clue how fucking bad I can be to you. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, And I can be very nasty. You know, I don't ever want to be nasty like that again. But at that particular time. Yeah. So anyway, he gets out of the car. I mean, walks in front of the car. My missus is driven around him. I didn't want to be violent in front of the kids, yeah, because I know where it goes. Like, it's gonna, bad things are gonna happen now. So we quickly get the kids in school. I get in the driver's seat. Now I'm driving. Try to walk out in front of me now. And I tried to run him over. That's exactly what I did. I tried to run him over with the car. And then the missus was like, um, pulled up the handbrake, thank God, because I would have fucking reversed over him. That was the plot. That was the plan. Mm. Anyway, jumped out of the car with a hammer and just attacked him. No, as that as was, yeah. So, but it was all coordinated. See, the thing is, they've done this in such a way, yeah. So you've got me attacking the guy. They've they've turned up into the school in two cars. So he's turned up with his car. She's turned up with her car. You've got his car at the end of the road. His car at the end of the road. So you've got the mis- the missus is there and the fellas up there, yeah. Now, I didn't know this. I only knew this after I've, I've been arrested and everything, yeah. So, I've attacked him anyway with the hammer. His missus is on the phone before I even get to him, yeah. Thank God I didn't hurt him that bad with a hammer, yeah. But I did warn him, and he got the picture. He got the he got the gist. Watch yourself in it. Don't be doing that. You know what I mean? Which mm. I think he's kind of understood. Um, but what the most thing that really fucking done my nothing about it was, I've hit this man with his hammer, tried to fucking do him anyway. I've been arrested, so I get nicked, yeah. I get nicked, I go to Collindale Police Station, I get arrested. So I'm there in Collindale Police Station and the, the cop has turned around to me, he's gone to me, that this guy that I've just assaulted with a hammer, he's telling me his name ain't what it is. Now, Sam the man, my brief, yeah? Sam the man from Watford and Co, yeah? He is the man. Yeah, he's my friend. He's been my friend for 15 plus years. Mm-hmm. And he's also my, my, my solicitor. Now, he is the man, literally. I can't, I, like, he's turned around and basically this guy has come in with an evidence. Like, say, for instance, like, your name's Joe. Mm. It's like, me, Joe, I've gone for you with a hammer. I know your name's Joe, but in your statement, your name's Bob. Mm. How's that working? Yeah, yeah, so I'm there in the interview. I'm like, this Brer's name ain't Bob. I can't say his name on the podcast because of legal reasons mm. and whatnot. But this guy's name is not Bob. This Brer's name is such and such a name so where's this going you know what i'm saying so i've been bailed now got bail and i know i'm on i'm on license recall i've got three and a half years license so i'm fucking sweating i'm thinking man i'm gonna go go back to jail for three and a half years man i've just found the best woman ever i've got my daughter is going to be born literally in the next two months yeah and i'm really trying to behave the only reason i'm now in this situation is because of fucking idiots drawing me out Mm. like a fucking idiot myself You've reacted. I, I've yeah. reacted, you yeah, know. Yeah. So I've gone on a run. Wrong mistake. It was a mistake. I shouldn't have gone on a run, but my my reasons were valid. My daughter was joy any day, and I'm not having fucking shit cunts, because that's what they are. Sorry about my language. Yeah? No, say what you want. Absolute shit cunts to try and take away me watching my daughter be born. This is my opportunity now to try and be the dad that I've always wanted. Mm. You understand? Yeah. Never had a dad. I'm now going to be the dad that I wanted as a kid, you know? So these fucking scumbags are trying to ruin it for me because they don't like me. Mm. That is it. Mm. When really and truly, I could go and kill any of them people and not think twice about it. You know what I'm saying? And the thing is, they're still wanting, they're still trying. Draw you in. They're still trying to draw me in, you know? So I end up going on a run. <clears throat> now my head is fucked. I want to kill this brother for what he's done to me. I want to kill her for her lies. Yeah, and this is where my mind's at right now. Not right now, obviously, three, four years ago. So um, I can't go home. 
police are going to my house. I'm living in a car, man. I'm living in a stolen motor that I bought off one of my pals. And um, my life is just upside down, literally upside fucking down. So everything was going perfect. I was working, got a wicked home, got wicked missus, babies on the way. Life is what you, everybody strive yeah. for. They want that. I'm getting it. It's in, the, it's in my hands now, yeah? And then it all gets whisked away from me. And my brain couldn't take that. I couldn't take it. And I started acting out weird, started drinking. Um, I was having to drink just to fall to sleep in the car. So you was just on the run for how long? I was on the run for 83 days. I literally, oh, it was that and that was a short step. That was a little stent really. Like, cause all I wanted and I was kept saying it, please, please God, let me stay out until Christmas day. Let me spend my first Christmas with my daughter. Like, mm. and that makes me fucking sad. makes me angry, man. Mm. It's a big thing, you know? Yeah. I've got this little baby. She's so precious. I want to spend Christmas with her. And that's all I kept saying. Please, God, please let me stay out. Let me stay out. And he did. He let me stay out until the 1st of fucking February. I mean, 1st of January. I managed to stay out for Christmas. I spent Christmas Eve, New Year's Day, New Year's Eve with my missus and my little one. And this is what I mean by... I wouldn't say everything happens for a reason, but things happen for reasons. You know what I mean? If that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, on this particular day, I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to get up. I didn't have to go out. I didn't have to do anything. I had some stolen stuff on me that I was selling. And um, and it was mad. It was like, I got in this car. From that moment on, it was the day was just doomed. I had an altercation with uh, one of my old buddies. Vehicle ended up getting smashed up, so I needed a new vehicle. So I found my other pal, need a car. Sorted it out for me, got me another car, another Nick Motor. And um, this is what I mean by this is so fucking weird how this all happened. I've got, I bought this car for my mate. I gave him a laptop, a couple of laptops for it, yeah? It's in the car. And I've gone to Kensal Rise. And as soon as I've parked in this spot, someone shouted out, Oi, that's my car. You couldn't make this shit out, honestly, I swear down. And I've looked out there and this chick is like, that's my fucking car, you cunt. <laughs> see, honest to God, yeah? So I'm like, fuck. This is insane. I've only had the car three minutes, literally three minutes, literally got in the car, drove around the corner, parked up, talking to my mate. Next thing you've got some some person from nowhere. That's my fucking car, mate. What the fuck? So I've obviously sped off. Next thing I've ended up having a police chase. So I'm driving down the road now and I've, I've got my missus on the phone and I'm saying, I'm saying, Bubs, it's over. They're fucking, it's over. It's over. I can see them. So... The maddest thing about it was I didn't actually know they were full on police until armed. police. No, they weren't armed. These ones weren't armed, All thank right. God. If they were armed, they would have shot me. Because yeah. I was ramming the shit out of their motors, mate, honestly. Oh, like dear. what happened was I'm very like I don't think sometimes, you know, I just need to get away. You know? Yeah. So that You got your adrenaline in you. Just gotta you go. gotta go. Yeah, I've got to get out of here. And I knew I couldn't get out. I was on a one straight road, you got cars parked either side. So you've got one vehicle, a lane in the middle for a car. You've got cars, cars here, either side. There's no way you're getting out. As This is what I mean by it. I was meant to go to jail that day. The woman has shouted out, that's my car. So I'm blowing through the back streets now of, of um, Kensal Rise. Come around some corners and I've driven into a dead end straight. Not a dead end, like it's uh, one, one street and there's a guy pushing a car up the road. <laughs> like literally, this yeah. is what I mean by this was meant to it's happen. Your time, yeah. Day. yeah, it was my time. And... It weren't, I was like, nah, 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 I'm not having it, not having it. So I fucking pushed his car, pushed the front of my car against his car, tried to ram his car up the street, and that weren't going anywhere. You know, oh, next thing I've seen a fucking police van pull up in front, so I'm like, bang, in reverse, whack, put, took off the front of the police car. And I didn't oh, know there was a copper in between me and his car. Yeah. Oh, so, shit. Yeah, so you've got all the fucking, oh, Bill thought I murdered his mate. So next thing, they've gone on psycho mode that old Bill have, and they're fucking absolutely, I'm just trying to ram this police van, I'm ramming the car in front of me, I'm trying to go back to ram it again. And it was just crazy. But I do remember, I remember the hiding I got for it as well, that was pretty painful, but I sort of deserved it. You know, they mm. thought their mate had just been murdered by me, and I generally didn't try to kill anyone. Like, you didn't see him, you've reversed, and yeah. he's got caught yeah, in it. You yeah, know yeah. what I mean? And, I, and thank God the geezer weren't hurt. Mm. He got out of the way just in time, because if he'd been in between that car and that van, he would have been dead, no doubt. So they, yeah. they nicked me for two counts of attempted murder on police. I get to the police station. And I remember when they picked me up off the floor, 
I said to the guys, I was like, mate, I never tried to fucking kill none of you. You know what I mean? I said, I fucking don't even know you were there. I mm. said, where's your fucking marked car? I said, you're in a bloody Vauxhall Sephira and it's black. Obviously, I'm in handcuffs, but it's when he started shouting, I'm arresting you for murder. I'm arresting you for a I was like, yeah. I never fucking tried to no. kill anyone. No. You know what I mean? You're just fucking trying to fit me up yeah. like everything else. And um, yeah, so I ended up getting nicked for that. I ended up going to uh, Wembley Police Station. And what made me laugh was I walked into the police station. The cop turned around to me and said, you're the most wanted man in Wembley. I was like, really? Apparently, I'd been at it. This is what they said. I was at it. They nicked me for a lot of burglaries, a lot more robberies. And it's like, it's the same situation. Like, when, and, and this is what I mean by the police throw shit at you, you know? Because imagine this, when I got done for the banks dressed in the burkas, I've literally, two weeks later, I'm still in Wandsworth, a slip comes under my door, police production. So I'm like, what the fuck's this for? So anyway, I get talked to reception in Wandsworth and it's two CID sitting there. And they're like, police production, Roberts, you're coming out of us. You can refuse if you want, but we'll just get you when you come when you finish your sentence. I was like, no, come on, let's go. Let's get it sorted. Going out, the cop has turned around to me and I laugh. I, I'll always laugh about this because it's like, he was giggling when he said it. He's turned around, he's looked at me, he's gone, Mr. Roberts, the flying squad are not happy with you. By the way, I'm arresting you for robbery times too. And I looked at him, I thought, you fucking dickhead, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was like, fit up time. Yeah. And I did that. And the maddest thing about it was, yeah, I actually did have nothing to do with that. I had I stood a full trial in Harrow Crown Court. I nearly got six years for it. I would have probably got an IPP actually with my previous. What it was, um, they accused me of doing these robberies, high value robberies, people were like taking watches, jeeps off of people, high 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 value vehicles, and then they found a vehicle on a shipping container on, on, on the way to Tasmania near. You know, but I didn't do that. That weren't me, you know what I mean? But they got the victim to pick me out and yeah, I did yeah. seventeen months after the robbery. Picked it's, you out. Picked me out, yeah. Like honestly, this is this is you could not make this shit up. And this is why I said, yeah, I was like, how the fuck? Like imagine this, yeah. You've got the CCTV. You've got a guy walking out of his out of his business, yeah. Pretty much a building like this, yeah. You've got a guy walking out of his business. He's got a big watch on his hand. He's got a big rangy sport out the front of the business. He's got a camera there outside keeping surveillance of the building. He's walked out. It's dark. As soon as he's walked around the corner, he's been chinned, yeah. His glasses have flown off his head, which they would do because he's just been smacked in the mouth. And as soon as he's gone back, someone's clamped him. So he's gone to sleep. Yeah. Within, first, within four or five seconds, yeah? That's exactly how it is, yeah? So he's been belted, clamped, dropped on his face. Hasn't seen a thing. You ain't seen nothing, mate. So we've... And, and obviously, because of a thing called facial mapping, yeah? When he's... When they're, talking to me about this they're like oh it's like looking at that picture of you and saying you're me mm. i'm saying bruv that you're not me that is not me and he's like how can you say that ain't you i said because it ain't me in it and i said furthermore what i will do is i'll do a bit of facial mapping on that to prove that it ain't me yeah and he's like how do you know about facial mapping i was like well you're accusing me of doing all of these bad crimes like which i haven't done i'm gonna defend myself rightly so you know what i'm saying it's like if someone's fighting you in the street you're gonna fucking fight them yeah yeah save course, yourself course. yeah yeah so Anyway, cut a long story short, went on a full bloody trial for that in Harrow Crown Court a month before I was due to be released. This is what I mean by I had so much animosity towards these people because it was like, I've I've been sentenced for the banks in 2006. I got uh, I only got three years for each one, but they all run concurrent. I remember the judge going mad saying that this ain't right. These are robberies. And the, the prosecution turned around and said, it's not in the public's interest to, do, to try these two young men. We're doing for theft. Mm. I got a touch. I should have got done for bank robbery. I should have got. I should have got ten, ten years for that. Maybe I should have. Maybe I would have stopped then. You know what I mean? Mm. I don't know. But on that particular time, it was mad. It was absolute madness, and I've lost my trailer for. No, and you got convicted for them for the the latest ones. Oh, you yeah. say with the attempted murder on the police, yeah. and then you the bloke with the ammo, and then you. How long did you go away for that? I was I was fucking lucky, man. And this is what I tell you about. This is where the whole situation was very weird shall we say yeah now my solicitor sam the man yeah from waterford and co yeah he's the man yeah he has basically said to me anti this guy is a known informer he is using a pseudonym you ever heard of a pseudonym yeah, yeah, pseudonym. A pseudonym. Like yeah, yeah. A pseudonym. yeah now his 
I want to say these guys' names, but I don't want to, because I don't want to get anyone else in trouble. I don't want to ignite anything else. But what my solicitor said to me was, let's bring him into court. Let's get him in the dock. I was like, yeah, let's do it. Let's get him up in the dock. Then everyone can come and see him for who he is. Yeah. You know, now I've got no objections against people. Um, uh, let's say becoming a police informer. Yeah, that is your business, isn't it? If a citizen is a citizen, it is their job to go to the police if they're involved in a crime. Mm. If you're criminal, see, my attitudes are slightly different on things, yeah? If the normal Joe public, like for yourself, for instance, Joe, if a crime gets committed on you, you have every right to phone the police because you're a citizen. You don't commit crime. You're not a violent man. You don't go out and cause trouble, yeah? yeah. So you have every right to pick up the phone and do the right thing. I have the right now to pick up the phone and yeah. phone the police if I choose to. You know, that doesn't make me a grass. That mm. makes me a citizen. Yeah. I'm a normal citizen. I'm like everyone else. I do anything because I don't commit crime no more. I don't phone the police on people. But on this particular time, this guy with all these funny names, he, basically the plan was let's bring, let's get him in court. So now his name's, uh, what do we call him earlier on? Joe. Or so we say his name's Joe, yeah? Now Joe's statement says that I've jumped out of the car, tried to kill him with the hammer, yeah? Now, on this on his statement is his name so now that's not his real name i know this man's name that ain't his name so we now know that that is a pseudonym yeah, yeah? so what i do now is my solicitor said we're getting him to court so we're going to go not guilty on everything now now i didn't care about the, the attempted murders on police i didn't care about it. all yeah. i wanted to do was get this bastard in court you know what i mean that's how i seen it yeah, yeah. because i want him i want all my mates to see this fucker's face you know what i'm saying that's what i want yeah that's what i want that's what I wanted at the time anyway. I wanted my pals to see this man so they could go and get him and I was in jail. To be honest, that mm -hmm. was the way I wanted it, yeah? So then anyway, the court didn't want that. I said, right, we're going to go not guilty on everything. So we're going not guilty on attempted murder times two. We're going not guilty on all the fucking burglaries that you fucking saying that I'm doing. Going not guilty on the robbery that I've been nicked for. So basically... The prosecutions didn't come around. Now, bear in mind, if you're up for <clears throat> attempted murder on police, you know yourself, you're getting 15 years for that. Yeah. Like, you're going a to serious, jail for a crime. long, long yeah. time. So I'm like, all right, cool. We're not guilty. We're not going guilty. Let's get him in court. And then the judge has turned around, prosecution, sorry, CPS has turned around and they're like, all right, we'll drop everything. I'm like, what? You're going to drop everything? What, you're dropping the attempted murders? Yep, yeah, yeah, we'll drop the attempted murders. We'll drop into two Section 18s. I was like, mate, I'm still going to get 10 years for that anyway. Mm. You know what I mean? I'll get 10 years for one of them, let alone two of them on coppers. And this is all stemming from people chatting shit to draw me out. You know, this is what I mean yeah, by yeah, it goes. It, evolved, it escalates, yeah, it escalates. And then it becomes people end up, bad things happen, man. If you push people to a certain extent, only, and this is what happened with me in that time. I got so wound up with what was going on. I've ended up going berserk mm. and end up really causing a lot of trouble for my family and, my, and for myself really unnecessary drama by the way you know and um so when i get into court they, they've ended up dropping the attempted murders down to two section 18s i'll show you as well i've got them all on my phone there for you from the solicitor um he they dropped basically the attempted murders to two section 18s then they dropped all the other stuff to like little shitty crimes and then they wanted me to i was like fuck off i'm not pleading guilty to nothing i plead guilty to fuck all they got to me, all right, so what about if we do you for a common assault? I was like, what? You want to do, what, you're dropping the attempt murders? So there's like, yep, we'll drop the Section 18s. We're now not going to pursue that because it's not in the public's interest. No, what it is, is you don't want dickhead in the fucking mm -hmm. dock because as soon as he turns around and, and uh, my barrister, QC James Scobie, by the way, you've probably heard of him, very mm -hmm. good brief, and it has bust me cases in the past. As soon as he's in that dock and my barrister then turns around, what's your name? Case done. is done. Yeah. Finished. The line. Gone. Mm. And walks out. But it didn't work that day because they turned around. They wanted the conviction. They so wanted to get you for something. They wanted me to get me Without him getting in, yeah, getting without him in there. Without him going into the dock. So I was like, all right, cool, safe. I'll plead guilty to common assault. I'll be guilty to ramming a police car, resisting arrest, using a vehicle. And I'll plead guilty to having a kitchen knife on me. And um, I ended up getting a total of, I think I got 16 months for ramming the old bill got 16 months for dangerous driving to run concurrent i got a month for having a kitchen knife on me um i got some other little shitty bits of sentence in total it added up to 20 months but because i had my license to do still as well as 
that sentence. I've gone in there like a fucking raging lunatic. Honest to God, this is no joke. I had this. This happened three weeks after me getting into prison. I've gone absolutely berserk, and I've kicked the security door in in swell in Scrubs Prison on the visiting hall. And chased the governors up and down the landing because my mate has come in to put me drugs into the prison, um, so I could fucking function because I needed to be buzzing in it. And that's mm. the truth in it. No joke, Joe. I was either get high or kill yourself. Yeah. That's where we're at at this time uh -huh. in my life, yeah? So I figure, right, I've got to get off my nuts. So anyway, this is the funniest. F it, it, it was funny. When I look back at it, it was obs it was madness. I was absolutely off the rocker, mate, honestly, because my parcels come in and they fucking got my parcel, yeah? So they've escorted me back to the security cell now. And I'm thinking, sitting there, I'm thinking Jesus Christ, he's going to get nicked. He's going to jail. Fuck. So I start kicking the door. Kicking the door. Boom. Boom. And then I've kicked it and the door's gone poof, burst open. Yeah. And I've like I'm like, wow. So the next thing, we're on we're on again. You know what I mean? The madness comes yeah. out again. So the next thing I picked up the chair and I remember this horrible little gov, yeah. He was a wanker. Absolute horrible little fuck he was, yeah. And uh he shit himself. When that door blew off the fucking hinges, he ran. He's gone. <laughs> shit his pants so I've come running out I picked the chair out and fucking started chasing the govs up and down the landing out, out the visiting hall and this and is he, what to get did they get this package I want my parcel back this is what I and they've for. taken it they've got it yeah, and I want shit. it back and that's yeah. how I'm at right now you know because that's the your life juice, the yeah, drugs yeah, yeah the yeah. drugs I don't want to be sober mm. I can't be sober so I want my shit back and that was the, that was the point so I fucking went chased all the govs all up and down the ring and uh, uh, the visiting hall Everyone that was getting drugs that day, I presume they got them because I was distracting everybody. <laughs> Next thing, about 40 govs. So I'm there in the visiting hall, I'm there with my chair, and you've got all the visitors over there, and then you've got me swinging a chair around saying, fuck off, and I threw a chair at them. It's gone through the fucking window, the visiting hall window, and then I've been mob-handed. They uh, wrapped me up, took me to the block. I was in the seg for three weeks, and they were like, why do you do it? And I was like, why do you think? Mm. what do you fucking think mm. you know what I mean I'm, I shouldn't be here mm. for starters I should not be here I have not hurt anyone I have not done anything wrong all I wanted to do was get on with my life you know and then you've got these poisonous fuckers because they're jealous or for their own initial reason I don't know what the fuck they're thinking but in my eyes they're jealous and they're trying to ruin everything that's happened for me and after all these years of bullshit I'm now getting what I want and they took it all back. Yeah. And now it made me so mad, I wanted to kill everybody. Like, and then when I got into prison, I was so depressed and de like down. I was thinking, fuck, is my missus going to leave me? Like, she's going to leave me. I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be on my own again. And I've been lonely, man. You know, when you've been in jail yeah, for years, I bet. it's a Being lonely in a confined space existence. for that long, it must be very lonely. Horrible. Oh, my mum's life is horrible, mate. And like, it's it's despair, you know, when you're you're it's hard to explain when you're in a box and no one's listening mm. and your screams ain't being heard. Must be horrible. Psychologically as well, mate. It's bad, it's bad, but you know like you've got hope to get out of it. And now you are out of it, mate. Yeah. And you do come you, through it. It's uh, you it's a great story, mate. Of what we've, I really appreciate you coming on. We've got to wrap it up. We've been going on nearly two hours. Seriously, now. yeah, Fuck, yeah. You know, Honestly, and and scratch the surface. We yet, ain't, Charlie. mate. We <laughs> ain't. But I think everyone's going to see a lot more of you anyway on different yeah, podcasts. I think so, man. Um, but just rounding it up, and obviously, completely reformed character now, and you're telling okay. your story, and that's mm -hmm. what that's the benefit of it, really. You want to come on, you want to tell people because. Even if it's one person, it may be a hundred, maybe a thousand. But if they're looking at it and say, wow, well, this guy has been through it. You know, you've been through the mill of abuse, for the life of crime. And now you come out, you're reformed, you're a builder yeah. now, you've got a lovely family. Yeah. Um, and you're a completely yeah, reformed man. character that, that actually speaks out against violence and yeah. ag against crime. You don't yeah. want anyone to. Yeah. And that's why you're doing it, isn't it? Well, that, well, do you know what it is? Our generation is not how it is. Mm. Like, with our lot now, it just seems... The, the kids of today are so much more violent yeah. and so much more aggressive and they're, all they're doing is fucking themselves up, man. Like, you can be violent and aggressive in the right circumstances. Go and get in a ring. Become an MMA star, man. Yeah. You Boxer. can be fully violent there. That's why if boxing If you get off on violence it. and you want to fucking hurt things, go in the ring mm. and have it out there. But it's all, I don't like 
the, all the violence that's on today, like you've got the kids. My, my children, I would never let my kids hang around on the streets, ever. I hung around on the streets. Look how I turned out. So my kids will never be associating on the streets, hanging around. There's nothing for the kids to do anyway. Mm. You know what I mean? But I, 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 I just don't want people making the same mistakes for me. And if one person can and sees this of me and is like, you know what, fucking hell, man. Let me try to do something different. Yeah. Let, let, like you can change, innit? it? It's, you're not stuck in that vicious circle. See, I've got my book coming out soon. I am in the process of writing my book, but it's, I don't know, it's hard It's hard to, you know when things are going wrong for you, they're not always going to be going wrong for you. But you have to be willing to make that step in it. You have to will that change in it. It's not going to be, it's, not everyone changes. No, Some doesn't happen. Some people are stuck in that That's shit right, forever. Yeah. Yeah, you've got to. Luckily, a, I'm, I changed. Bro. Everyone has their their shit in life, don't they? And obviously, you've had a lot of shit with crime and everything like that. But you do right, you do little things right. It, it does come it back comes round. Back for you, it man. does, and, yeah. and believing as well, like having a belief in something is important. Like mm. you've got, like me, for instance, I I believe that things are gonna good be good for me, and mm. I have believed this for a little while. I believe in, like, if you don't do bad, yeah, like if you help things good, like, and I don't help to get recognition i mm. don't help people or do something for the recognition i don't do that i do it because it makes me feel your good. own well-being you know what i mean mm. it's nice doing something yeah nice for someone you know if you see someone doing something like you see the old lady struggling across the road man i'll, I'll fucking help that lady mm. across the road just because i've been a criminal in my past life don't mean i can't be nice now no. you know what i mean so it's important for for society in a whole to look at other people and think all oh, cr- prisoners they're not all bad you know and a lot of prisoners have got reasons for why they are being the way they are and a lot of people are embarrassed. You know, they won't speak about how they feel. It's a macho thing, isn't it? Men don't like discussing their feelings, you know what I mean? Yeah, very but true. it's the truth. Very the true. mental health thing as well, like, a lot of prisoners in England today are suffering big time from mental health, and there is no fucking procedure to help these men out. Like, there really isn't. Like, I remember being sat in cells, Joe, and I was ready to hang, mate. My neighbour hung himself. I can't mention his name on telly. It affected me, man. He was 21 years old. 21. Terrible. Killed himself. Terrible. Because his missus left him. And I've been there. Mm. I've been there. I've had them thoughts. I've had them feelings, you know, but... It's well, hard. Yeah, it is. It is hard, mate. And I really appreciate you coming on, Ant, no and telling man. your story. Thanks again, mate. Thank you very much, Ant. And uh, Anthony Roberts, everyone. Cheers. Tune in to the care, next man. one. Cheers. Later.